Section 7.4, Geometrically Defined Vectors and Applications. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just some terminology. So the first thing we're going to look at here is this thing called a vector. So this here is a vector. Okay, and with this vector, it has components to it. So, so this point O at the bottom here, so right down here, this is called an initial point. Okay, and this point up top, this point P, this is called a terminal point. So now we're going to talk about this vector OP. So I can write OP as OP with an arrow over the top of it, or I can write it as vector A. So both these would be sufficient because the vector is um, OP or the vector is A. I can call it either one. Now another piece about how this vector works here, it's a directed line segment. So keep in mind, this is an array where we got an initial point here, oops, here, and then it just goes on forever. That doesn't happen here. So kind of keep that in mind when we're dealing with these. So this is a directed line segment. So it has a beginning, which is here, and it stops there, whatever point that is. And we can also talk about, since this has a beginning of an end, about the magnitude. And a magnitude is just the length of the vector. So... So the length of the vector is the magnitude. So the way we can talk about the length of this vector A or vector OP is I can write it this way. Or I can write it this way. Both will be sufficient. So the single line implies that I'm talking about a length of the vector that we call a magnitude. Okay, there's another thing here. There is this arrow. This arrow simply tells us the direction of that line segment. So when I think of a vector, I think of a directed line segment. So that's how I can talk about a vector. It's a directed line segment. So this is telling me I'm actually going from O here and I'm going up to P. But I'm starting at O and I'm ending on P, which also can be described by the initial point and terminal point. If I think of initial point, I think of beginning point. And then when I hear terminal point, that's where I end, so ending point. So it makes sense why we have that arrow going towards the P. Okay, so that's how we talk about vectors. Now, I have a few more things to talk about. Another thing is we can talk about vectors being equal, okay, which is something we don't normally get. So now, if I was way down here, and let's say I made this vector here. Oh, let me get a different color here. Make it red. Okay, so I started here, and I, I say, okay, let's go from here. Put my point in there. And then I draw a line. Now I'm trying to draw it the same length as the other one. And the same direction. Which we see, that's pretty good. And let's call this B. Oops. So let me call that vector B. Okay, so if you look at these, I can see that they're the same length if I just kind of moved it up there. Um, which I can, which we can see that they're the same. I just put them right next to each other so you can kind of see them. Then I would say that these two vectors are equal because they're going in the same direction. And if you look at the lengths of them, you know, they're both the same, okay? And they're going in the same direction. So that tells me these vectors would be equal. So I would say vector A equals vector B. So that's the first thing we can do. Another thing we can do 
is we can also talk about adding two vectors together. So if I was to take a plus b, okay, essentially all I would do is I would stack these. And I'll show you what I mean by that. And I would just stack them in such a way where I have the tip being the, the initial point of the b there. Now this would actually be a plus b. That's what I would call that vector. Now these were parallel, or I should say they were equal vectors, but they're also parallel vectors. And they call them parallel vectors because they are scalar multiples of each other. So if I times one by a by one, I would get b, and if I times b by 1, I would get a. So these are also what we call parallel vectors. Okay, so I could say a plus b, and I could also say a is parallel to b. And I use two lines to signify parallel. All right, so we're just kind of learning a lot of vocab right now. Now, there's another vector that we can actually talk about next we could talk about the vector negative a. Now negative a goes in the other direction. So that's something to think about too when I'm dealing with negative a's. So I can have a positive a, which means it's going in this direction here. And then I can have a negative a that goes in the other direction. So essentially, it's the same thing. Another thing I can talk about is I can talk about 2a. So essentially what that means is, oops, wrong one. I can simply take this one and I can double it in length. And now this new vector I can call 2a. Okay. Or I could even make it smaller. I could cut it in half. So let's see where I'm starting at with this one. So I can start here, and I could just go halfway. And then I could call this vector one half of A. Okay, so I can do a lot of things with these. So I can go half of A. I could take the whole vector, which is from here to here, and call that 2A. So these are just different ways I can think of. I can double vectors. Now what we're going to get into is just adding these vectors. And I'll do that in the next video. After one more idea here. Now remember, I can also talk about parallel, and I did here with A and B. But I can also have vectors that aren't necessarily the same length. Right? I could have one vector. Um, let me move to the next page. I could have one vector, let's say, that, oops, that long. And then I could say, hey, here's another vector called that A. And there's another vector here, this long. Now, as long as they're going in the same direction or opposite directions, I can call them parallel. Because think about this. I can say, okay. This is my A here, and let's say there's where I'm starting. Um, this could actually, like the magnitude of A could equal, or I should say, the magnitude of B could equal like 3A. So again, this could be like triple the length. This is Magnitude of B could be triple the length. It'd be three, the length of three, and also I can flip it around. So I could call it a negative A and actually get this other vector by just a scalar multiple. And that's what it means for them to be parallel. So that's it.